Hello everyone, we are Group 6 and we are here to share our magical skills with you. Our aim is not only to entertain but also to inspire you to appreciate and enjoy the beauty of math. Get ready for a fun-filled session of learning and discovery. So for the first one, if f of x is equal to sine g of x, where g of x is a polynomial in x, is the limit of f of x as x approaches to c equals to f of c for any c, why or why not? To answer this question, we need to understand the polynomial functions and the definition of limits in the context of continuity. So, based on sides, polynomial functions are expressions that may contain variables of varying degrees, non-zero leading coefficients, positive exponents, and constants. While in the continuity and limits, a function f of x is continuous at a point c if the limit of f of x as x approaches to c is equal to f of c. Ibig sabihin nito guys, kailangan define daw ang value ng f of x approaches the value of, of c at sa f of c para matawag na continuous. Therefore, the answer is yes for the reason that polynomials are continuous everywhere and hence the limit of f of x as x approaches any c equals f of c. To prove that, we can evaluate the limit of f of x as x approaches to c and compare it to the value of f of c. Let's choose c equals 2 as an example. The limit of f of x as x approaches to 2 is equal to the limit of x squared minus 3x plus 5 as x approaches to 2. There's no restrictions kaya we can substitute the value which is 2 sa mga x. So, f of 2 equals to 2 squared minus 3 times 2 plus 5. So, when we combine it, the answer is 3. This example shows that for the given polynomial function, the limit of the function as a approaches any point in its domain is equal to the value of the function at that point, indicating the continuity of the function. For number 2, we have the problem. If f of x is equal to cos g of x, where g of x is a polynomial, is the limit of f of x where x approaches c is equal to f of x for any c? Yes or no? Why or why not? Similar to the first one or to question number one, the answer is yes. The limit of f of x as x approaches c is equal to f of c for any c. Here's why. When f of x is equal to cos g of x, where g of x is a polynomial, the composition function cos g of x inherits the continuity of cos x. Since cosine is continuous for all real numbers, the composition f of x is continuous everywhere as well. Therefore, by the continuity of f of x, the limit of f of x as x approaches c exists and is equal to f of c for any c. For example, let's consider the function f of x is equals to cos x squared, where g of x is equals to x squared is a polynomial function. First, we have x approaches c is equals to 0. The limit of cos x squared, where x approaches 0, is equals to cos 0 squared is equals to 1. Since f of x is equals to cos x squared, where x approaches 0, f of 0 is equals to cos 0 squared is equals to 1. And next, we have x approaches c is equals to pi over 2. The limit of cos x squared is equals to cos pi over 2 squared is equals to cos pi over 4 squared is equals to 0. Therefore, since f of x is equals to cos x squared, where x approaches pi over 2, cos pi over 4 squared is equals to 0 is equals to f of pi over 2. 
In both cases, the limit of f of x as x approaches c is equal to f of c, confirming that the statement holds true for any value of c. Therefore, the limit of f of x as x approaches c is indeed equal to f of c for any c. For the third question, in theorem 2.3.2, why is there a condition that g of c, which is a polynomial in x, should be greater than 0 for any c? By requiring g of c greater than 0 for any c, theorem 2.3.2, ensures that the function g of x remains positive throughout the interval being considered. Since the function remains positive throughout, and therefore, the function must change sign at some point within the interval to have a root. Well, the theorem states that if a function f of x is continuous on the closed interval a and b, and f of a and f of b have opposite sign of f of a less than 0 and f of b greater than 0, then there exists at least one c in the interval a and b. In simpler terms, if a function changes sign over an interval, it must have a root within that interval. However, the function must be continuous over the interval. If g of x remains positive throughout the interval, and if g of a and g of b have opposite sign, then there must be at least one root within the interval. This is because the function changes sign from positive to negative or vice versa, at some point indicating the presence of a root. For example, we have g of x equal x squared and our interval is negative 3 and 3. So we will substitute our interval to our equation so it will be g of x equal negative 3 squared minus 4 and g of x equal 3 squared minus 4 and the answer will be 5. In summary, the condition of g of x greater than 0 for any c ensures that the polynomial function g of x remains positive throughout the interval which is essential for applying the intermediate value theorem to prove the existence of roots within that interval. And now, we will proceed to the question number 4. Thus, the limit of an exponential function exists for any real number c? Why or why not? Yes, the limit of an exponential function exists for any real number c. This is because of the fact that exponential functions such f of x is equal to e rapidly increase or decrease when a e approaches closer to positive or negative infinity, respectively. Thus, as x approaches any real number c, the value of the exponential function approaches a finite limit. Now, we will proceed to the given example. Let's examine the limit of the function f of x is equal to 2 raised to x as x approaches to 3. So, ang example equation po natin ay limit of the function f of x is equal to 2 raised to x as x approaches to 3. So, constant po ang given natin kaya pwede po natin siya gawing direct substitution sa pamamagitan ng pag-change ng possible values ng x approaches to 3 from the left and the right side. So, magsistart po tayong mag-substitute ng value ng x po natin sa left side which is yung sa 2 po. So, ang mga nakuha po natin is 2, 2.5, 2.7, 2.9, and 2.999. So, ang Ang equals po niya is 8, 4.5947, 6.4980, and lastly, 7.9999. And from the right side naman po, which is the 4, is ang mga na-substitute po natin is 4, 3.5, 3.3, 3.2, and 3.0001 
and yung equal niya naman po is 16 9.8 and 8 so this illustrates that the limit of the exponential function to raise to x exists for any real number c as it approaches 2 raised to c as x approaches c from either side therefore the limit of f of x to raise to x as x approaches 3 demonstrates that the function 2 raised to x approaches 2 raised to 3 is equal to 8 as x gets closer to 3. Let's move on to number 5. Given the graph f of x is equal to logarithm of x, what do you think is the value of limits of f of x where x approaches to 0 from the right side and y? So, let's consider the function of f of x is equal to logarithm of x. So, illustrate natin siya. As x approaches to 0 from the right side, these are the example of x or possible value of x gets closer to 0. So, meron tayong 0 0.001 and 0 0.0001 and so on. So, to get the value of f of x, sabi ko nga kanina, f of x is equal to logarithm of x. So, itong x natin, yung mga value na x natin, isa substitute lang natin siya kay logarithm of x. So, ang magiging formula niya is logarithm of 0 0.001 is equal to negative 3. So, yung logarithm of x natin is equal to negative 3. Eh, di ba nga yung logarithm of x is equal to f of x? So, yung negative 3 is f of x. So, ganun din yung gagawin na sa susunod. So, logarithm of 0 0.0001 is equal to negative 4. So, yung f of x ng 0 0.0001 is negative 4. Ganun lang din sa sus mga sumusunod. So, um, the value of f of x become increasingly negative. So, in the limit of f of x, where x approaches to 0 from the right, ang f of x natin nag approach kay negative infinity. So, the value of f of so the value of limit of f of x as x approaches to 0 from the right is negative infinity.